Thank you for tuning in to another Bedley Brothers episode. This is episode 31, and we've got a very special guest. I'm Tim Bedley, and my brother Scott is going to introduce our guest to you today. Scott? Thanks. Uh, we have a music teacher here with us today, but she's not just your ordinary music teacher. Well, no music teachers are ordinary, that's for sure. <laughs> they all have special talents. Um, she works at a K-5 new academy in Canoga Park in Los Angeles. She is a UCLA Bruin. Go Bruins! Uh, she was the 2010 Ron Clark Great American Teacher Award recipient. Um, she has a National Sontag Prize in Urban Education. She created music for um, uh, something called Music for All. It's a scholarship fund to provide instruments for students. And then she is the 2013 People Magazine Teacher of the Year finalist, which will be announced in just a few weeks. I, are you excited for that, Jenny? Yes, and we're eagerly waiting because even the finalists don't know yet who who won. So <laughs> that's awesome. Well, um, we're really thankful to have Janine Letford here today to just talk music and integration in the classroom with music. Welcome, Janine. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you give us just a quick background on you, besides the things we just mentioned, but a quick background on you and your music education and, and what gives you a, like a passion about being in music education. Awesome. Well, I started my career as a third grade teacher at this same school, and I grew up with uh, music in, in the home. My twin played the bassoon, my little sister played the flute, my baby bro a brother played the clarinet, so we were all very mu musical. So I, I knew for my students that I wanted to at least expose, expose them. So we did the recorder in my third grade classroom and looked at the orchestra and just utilized that and connected it to other subjects as well. And so then I was asked to teach the recorder to the whole third grade and then I was asked to do the whole music pro program at, at the school. So that's how I'm in the position now. I did third, third grade for three years and this is my fifth, sixth year teaching music at the school. Awesome. Great. Hey, can you tell us, uh, I hear that you use music to connect with the EL learners at your school there. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do with those uh, kids? Yes, so I know 99% um, of the population at, at my, my school, um, they're English language learn, uh, learners, and they're, most of them, their first la language is Spanish. So I knew vocabulary, vocabulario, vocabulario. So the words just needed to come, and I knew that music was a great way to bring that. Um, doing di different chants, um, connecting it to like a by um, if we were st studying uh, some someone in history bringing in music that that way singing um, ab about them so I, I just knew that the more that I brought vocabulary in and the more that I did connecting vo vocabulary as well so if we do um, a lesson in here where we do the word note or staff I also bring in the multi um, Def, def, definition of staff. So staff is, you know, the lines that the music notes are on, but staff is also a group of people that, that work at a certain place. So I'm always connecting vocabulary into my lessons here, even though I'm not their general education um, instructor. Now, Janine, that makes me think, like, is there specific styles of music that you try to approach, or is it just kind of anything that you think the kids will connect to? Um, is it... Uh, simple songs or more complex like give us a little more insight into that piece I certainly want to bring in their con connecting factor so um, for in for in instance we read this this book um, it was a school school white white book it's called one wonder it's a great great book um, and the author did a great job um, having a song be um, almost at the beginning of each chapter chapter she had a song start out the, the uh, ch chapter so the song that she chose kind of gave more in insight to that particular character that she was introducing so with that I had the children um, choose a song from their own life um, that kind of gave insight to who they 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 were so um, by them kind of seeing what the music that they're list listening to what they're connecting to um, so that was a great great way to connect to their own own life I also want to expose them to music that they may never uh, have heard before. So as you see behind behind me, I have uh, Gustavo Dudamel on, on the wall. Um, he is a conductor at the Walt Dis Disney um, Philharmonic, or the Los Angeles Philharmonic at the Walt Disney Concert Hall. And I really want to expose them to classical music, um, to jazz, to blues, but I also want to embed it into um, wherever I can connect to that curriculum 
connection, so the history or um, just whatever's go going on there. So it is bringing music in from their own life, but also giving them that extra exposure that I don't think they, they might be getting elsewhere. Cool. And would you... So are go you, ahead. Are you teaching... Uh, what, what kind of music are you teaching the kids? I mean, are you just... Is it music appreciation, or are you going beyond that and actually teaching them instruments or vocals? I mean, you teach them actual things that you would learn from a vocal instructor type things or what do you you know how deep are you getting with these kids in elementary school I'm actually doing it at all so it is music um, appreciation of maybe for about the first 15 minutes of class we usually have um, a read a read aloud that that we um, do with so like this one's Duke L L L Ellington so they um they hear about him, they hear his jazz, they learn about historical biographies, and then for the remainder, the remaining of the class period, we have our in instruments. So for second and third grade, they're doing recorder, they're learning their notes, the staff, rhythm, pitch, beat. For fourth and fifth grade, they get to choose their band instruments, so they can choose from trumpet, uh, flute, clarinet, percussion, saxophone, um, and recorder as well. So it's the whole shebang. Wow. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, my mind's spinning on all the ideas. Uh, so you talked, um, in some of the things that I've read that you've written about, you talked about different integration and adding music to reading. Mm -hmm. And you talked a little bit about those two stories you shared. But the one that really kind of, like, just jumped out at me personally was almost like you were adding a soundtrack mm -hmm. to the stories that you were reading with kids. Could you share a little bit more about that? Yes, um, I, I, a student once said to me once I, I, I did I, I did that for the first time. She was like, Miss Lefford, you made the book come alive when you just I read and then the music played and just how watching a film would be so we would be missing a part of, of it if there wasn't a, that sound soundtrack behind. I mean, imagine Superman without that that score. <laughs> you know, it, a whole element is gone. So um, I knew the impact that adding that would would be. So even like last night, um, I found this book from a, a second grade te a teacher. Froggy plays in the band, and it's about this li little frog who wants to start a band to win this prize. So I go on YouTube, I find these sound clips. And then I pull pull them and I put them into Final Cut, and I record myself reading the the words, and then I add in, you know, him sounding awful on the saxophone, but then getting better. And the kids, you know, it's one thing to read it and go like honk honk, but it's another thing when you can hear an awful saxophone and then hear the band playing and hear him getting better. Um, so it does take, you know, a small amount of time. And you guys are our tech guys. You know, at first it's it's slow, but the more you do it, it's fast. But it just brings a whole other L element to the book. So every book that I do read, um, I found music to either go with it, or you know, you you chop chop it up and just play certain segments at certain certain times. How cool! It sounds to me like you're one of those music teachers. It's not just like music in isolation over here, and then the academics type of thing over here, you're really bringing it together. Is there anything else that you do besides using that soundtrack idea to uh, connect the, you know, the stuff that you're going to be tested on, you know, those types of things? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Along with the stuff that's, in my opinion, I'm sure you agree, is really important in life, yes. but we don't necessarily test the kids on it. So what do you, what else do you do to kind of bring those two worlds together? Um, in addition to, to that and, you know, touching on um, similes, with, so when my fourth graders have to choose an instrument, they just don't say, oh, I want to play the trumpet. Of course, they give me reasoning why, and then they say, oh, the trumpet is like the sun because, you know, it's bright yellow or it emits sound waves or, you know, they have to give me um, a simile in, in addition to that. I also um, do classification, and we know as elementary school um Teachers, the kids have to know how to, how to classify, how how to group, and then now how to defend their positions of uh, or their reasons for putting in, them into the group. So the or the orchestra is a great um, tool to, to to use. Number one, my kinders can classify. Uh, they normally put the saxophone with with the brass, but they get to talk about why, and then they get to talk about why is the saxophone actually a woodwind and not a, a brass. Um, they can do by size. We talk about pitch. The smaller the instrument, usually the higher the pitch. So you're getting into science. That's a second grade um, standard right, right there, sound, sound waves. Um, they get to do the Venn di diagram, comparing and 
in instrument. If teachers want to go to dsokids.com or SF sfskids.org that's the symphonies they have a kid page you can press on an instrument what does the trombone sound like so you can have them writing essays about the trombone as a low sound or just their de descriptions there um, I also use this for math data as well graphing kids need to know how to graph why not graph the orchestra and um, see that there's way more strings in an or in, in an or orchestra than brass um, and then they, they can show that on, on a graph. So there's so many different lessons that I, I can do in a general education classroom utilizing the, or the orchestra and also allowing them to hear what the instruments sound like solo and within an ensemble as well. And it just makes, uh, makes it fun. So when the kids do get older and they want to go see an orchestra and I actually do take my fifth graders to the Walt Disney Con Con Concert Hall. It's a great end trip after all of this for the past four years that they actually get to see an orchestra play. So this is fun for, for me. That's cool, building that background knowledge. Now, before we came on live, you were sharing, um, and I didn't know this until we talked earlier, but you're working with uh, gifted students as well, um, mm -hmm. and you're doing that as an after-school type program. Am I right on that, Janine? Yes, yes. It, it, it was normally in, in school, but it, it got moved to after-school. So what are some um, ways that you're maybe either integrating music or just some cool things you're working on with those gifted students? Mm -hmm. um, actually, it's the whole arts, because I just love the whole whole arts. And it's a strategy that I discovered um, at the Music cent cent Center. Sorry, um, It's called Visual Thinking Strategy. So let's say I look at a portrait, a painted portrait of Abraham Lincoln, and I see him there with a book and like a pocket watch and a column and a just maybe a flag behind him. The kids make a list of what they see, they're observing, just the straight uh, observations, and then we look for pat patterns, and then they need to take those concrete observations into the abstract. So actually we did this two weeks ago, and the kids were like, oh, okay, I see a book. To me that symbolizes, you know, you have like his love for reading. That symbolizes freedom because when you read, you become more and more free to experience more and more things. And, some of these things the kids say, you're like, oh, wow, I, I didn't e even see that. So it's great, and I believe uh, Sarah Brown Westling, she has a great te teaching channel, um, org video on that, and that's actually where I got that lesson, but I wanted to kind of gear it more towards the arts. Um, so how can they look at, at a paint painting um, and go from concrete to the abstract and then attach that to a historical biography piece that they may be doing in their general ed classroom. So with their teacher, they may be writing about Abraham Lincoln, but now they can add this artistic um, view, viewpoint to it as, as well. Wow, the, there's so many layers of depth in there. It's just mm -hmm. it's cool to hear what you're doing. It's um, fun. <laughs> hey, uh, can you tell us, uh, I guess you're going to be in a, a book that's going to be coming out uh, here pretty soon. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that book? Uh, I noticed that your picture's right there on the top in the center of the cover. <laughs> Hold that trumpet. Woohoo! Good job. This book. So. <laughs> and wow, this was a, a blessing because I did not expect this, but uh, it's certainly um, a, a blessing. I, I was con contacted um, late, late fall to be a part of this pro project. Um, Katrina Fried, or Kat Kat Katrina Fried, uh, she just went around the country talking to 50 um, educators and wanted to get their story about how they started, what's going on in their classrooms, their struggles, their tri triumphs, and just what makes them passionate about education. So you have Jeff Car Carbono, um, who was a National Teacher of the Year. You have um, Al Alex Kachitani. If you want to talk, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so who just came out with, with the book himself? Um, just it's just a blessing and an honor to be in a book that comes out of, of October eighth um, with just amazing, passionate educators, which we're, I believe we're just representatives of all the like of you, passionate educators who are going above and beyond the eight to, to three call and just giving their their kids all, all that that they have so this is just certainly if you want to be inspired and just reading stories of just amazing people around this nation certainly pick up this book it's awesome and and it, it's definitely an honor to have you represented in there and an honor to have you on the show today Janine and meet you and uh, learn about some of the amazing things you're doing with kids and connecting music 
and really just giving that whole brain activity for kids to be able to expand their level of learning. So thank you so much for being here today. Is there anything else you wanted to share about before we get to our tips? Um, just I challenge teachers to see how music and the arts affects their own own lives, and then that's the, the easiest way to connect it to to to, to your kids. So awesome. Hey Tim, tip you got to go first today. You got the first tip. Come on. I got okay. Uh, my tip kind of corresponds with that book, but if you haven't watched some of the early episodes of the Bedley Brothers, there's some amazing guests. I, I watched them a million times, and so our view count goes up. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but I, I do like to go back and relook at those and learn some things that some of those amazing people like Alex, Alex Kajitani and Rick Morris and some of the other special guests like Angela Myers, and they can name uh, quite a few amazing teachers that were sharing some incredible things. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to watch some of those other shows, I hope you'll just take the time, not for Tim or I, but just for the amazing educators we've been able to have on our show. Cool. Well, uh, I'm wearing my UCI shirt today <laughs> for the Bailey my, Brothers show. My, uh, my, not my so much because I got my credential at UCI, University of California at <laughs> Irvine. But uh, just to promote the idea of uh, NEU, NEU, that's Na No Excuses University. I don't know if you guys have heard of that before. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a program that you get into your elementary school that really just focuses the whole school on kids going to college and making sure that every kid in your school is thinking, I'm going to college. Now, we know that they're not all going to college, and that's fine. But we want to make sure that we give them every opportunity to prepare to move in that direction if they choose to do so. And so just look into it. I'm just not going to talk a lot about it, but uh, look into NEU, and maybe you can get that going in your school as well. I just started at a new school this year, and the school's been on the NEU uh, you know, program. We all have flags outside of our, our rooms that are for each university. The kids oh, wear awesome. shirts that, uh, to school. I think mine has uh, my name on the back right there, <laughs> okay, and all the kids are sporting those around school. It kind of makes it fun. So that's my tip for today. Cool. Awesome tip, brother. Um, yes, sure. Janine, again, thanks for joining us, and Thank thanks you. for uh, listening or watching another episode of the Bedley Brothers. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Okay. Take care. <laughs>